So the Aros Pro is one of my all-time favorite motherboards and every time there's a new chipset being released I'm really trying to put my hands on those as soon as possible. They don't only spec well, Gigabyte is really good at giving them a sense of calm, focused engineering with a very carefully chosen menu of components. Today we are reviewing the Z690 Aros Pro, Gigabyte's very own interpretation on what an Alder Lake board should look like, exclusively centered around pushing its CPU to its absolute last limits. And I can't help myself not saying how short its name is, Z690 Aros Pro. Contrast this to Rog Strix Z690 Gaming-F Wi-Fi. See, size does not always matter. Now, ours is Gigabyte more enthusiast gaming-centric lineup of motherboards and the Pro, its bestseller. And for good reasons. Uh, because it's one of the most deliciously focused motherboard you can get. All of its components are all carefully selected to serve both performances and longevity. In addition, the Z690 series imposes several new technologies which did force Gigabyte engineering team to go in a deep redesign of this board, which is always a risky operation. And at 330 bucks, it's also surprisingly much cheaper than its natural competition, the ROG Strix series, or even the excellent Z694s from MSI, both of which are considerably more expensive. So yeah, definitely Gigabyte is making a lot of promises there. Now, starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a six layered ATX motherboard and having that many layers is really important because it will provide a superior PCIe signal installation, exactly what the Z690 Aros Pro needs to safely and stably operate the brand new PCIe 5.0 standard. My only concern here is the aesthetics of it all because it looks so Blah. Compare it to Asus rock boards and you'll see right away what I mean. Now, I know that many of you won't really mind it, but when I get an Aros motherboard, I do expect a little bit of decorum to marry to its performances abilities. And, and yeah, uh, something that I would encourage Gigabyte to, to go a bit crazy or crazier on the next iteration of that board. Now, CPU socket wise, it is powered by the brand new LG1700 CPU socket, supporting both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. That is 500 more pins than its predecessor, the LG1200, which is easily explained by the fact that the new Alder Lake Intel Core processors will impose a higher core count, so more voltage and, and all that, and much more bandwidth because it's gonna provide PCIe 5.0 standard to your motherboard as well as DDR5 RAM support. Now, RAM-wise, the Z690 Aros Pro supports up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual-channel configuration and clockable up to an insane 6.1GHz, largely surpassing its previous iteration, which was limited by the DDR4 RAM limitations. And having DDR5 RAM support is a big Deal. Not only does it double DDR4 data swaps, but it also proposes much faster clocks, something which will have an impact on your AAA gaming as well as content creation. But it also means uh, a more expensive memory and a mandatory upgrade, since this board is not backward compatible to DDR4 memory. Now, VRM-wise, well, let me say it straight. Gigabyte went absolutely insane. We got no less than 19 direct phases for a total of 1640 amps of power, including 1690 amps power stages to feed your CPU. That is more than 1440 amps to juice the most demanding Alder Lake. Obviously, more than you'll ever need, not only to operate, but to I don't want even to say severely, it's beyond severely, to, 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 to reap the, the, the overclocking cores of your processor, if that means anything, and I really doubt it does. And let me tell you straight up, this is probably unnecessary and the most I've ever seen on a motherboard 
uh, uh, costing less than 400 bucks. And in terms of overclocking, this thing is a Rolls Royce and the board of choice for the most enthusiastic clock seekers out there. But obviously with that much power comes a lot of heat and luckily the Z690 Aeros Pro has a long experience in terms of VRM cooling and has a few tricks up its sleeves to keep it cool. First, having that many power stages allows a wider power spread, reducing every power stage's individual heat footprint. But most importantly, Gigabyte has equipped the board with top of the industry VRM blocks, which has nothing to envy from its much more expensive siblings. They are both taller, wider and denser than ever before. The main block in particular has this large metallic roof which covers the entirety of the IO and provides an unprecedented amount of radiating surface. They also have a double contact design offering a thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages for a faster heat transfer. And despite the gargantuesque amount of power, the VRM stays insolently cool with a heavily overclocked configuration and a long-lasting synthetic load, our i7-12700K barely brought the thermometer up to 60 degrees Celsius, showing Gigabyte's absolute control in balancing a ludicrous amount of power delivery and cooling abilities. Now, worth noting, the VRM blocks managed to deliver enough clearance for bulky fan coolers such as this Notia to be comfortably installed. Obviously, an absolute unchallenged VRM kudos to ours for this. Now, storage-wise, we got four M.2 solid set drives, all of which are PCIe 4.0 enabled, translating a whopping 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap each, obviously offering a lot of fast rate combination and expandability. Now, knowing how hot these sticks can run, when I saw three of them placed right next to each other and cooled by the very same thermal plate, I was worried. But after testing three M.2 solid state drives running full flames, temperatures managed to stay way lower than thermal throttling limits. And for that, we need to thank mainly the double-sided thermal pads equipping every M.2 solid state drive connectors, as well as a rather thick and large thermo shield. Now, worth noting is the fact that the CPU-linked M.2 solid state drive connector has full access to PCIe 5.0 lanes, which hints at PCIe 5.0 M.2 solid state drive supports with speeds topping 128 gigabyte per second. My only regret here is a lack of gigabytes answer to Asus M.2 solid state drive screwless uh, locking mechanism. Gigabyte is yet to come with their own version of that and I think that's really something which matters to first-time builders as well as uh, uh, gamers enthusiasts alike. Think Gigabyte, think. PCIe expansion wise we got three 16 slots with different speed. As usual only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes therefore this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. In addition, and for the first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning it can swap up to 64 gigabyte per second, dwarfing the naked 16 slots, which operates only four lanes at PCIe 3 standard, meaning four gigabyte per second only. Obviously a single video card motherboard, which is not very surprising for a pro gamer. SLI is dead, uh, Crossfire inexistent as well as graphic cards on the market anyways. And now, obviously, I need to address the elephant in the room, which is not me, but the PCIe 5.0 standard. And like I said in the beginning of this review, which is absolutely useless since we do not have PCIe 5.0 enabled graphics card. And even if we did, we're not gonna see any graphics card able to output anything close to the PCIe 5.0 level bandwidth for the next few years. And when I say next few years, I'm talking maybe two to three minimum. So future proofing, that's about it. Now chipset wise, cause that's mostly why we're here. We got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 native supported chipset. It have more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth on a very cold six watts heat footprint, half of what AMD managed to do with its infamous X570 chipset, which had to be equipped with expensive, sometimes noisy chipset fans, or more recently with very large, imposing and expensive heat shields. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield is much smaller in area, costs less, and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius at all time, which is where you want it to be for a long lasting board. In short, Intel does a great job at bringing PCIe 4.0 to a more mature uh, uh, level and, and make it available to a wider public, even on cheaper motherboard 
such as its B series. Now, back IOIs. First, let me note the presence of our fully integrated backplate, totally expected at this price range. And starting from the left, we have four third generation USB plugs, the standard Wi Fi 6 dual band adapter, which did surprise me because I was expecting Wi Fi 6E, the, the new standard, which is about everywhere these days. Um, so yeah, definitely something Gigabyte want to address on the next iteration of, of the iOS Pro. Next, we have four USB second generation plugs, a bit too many of that already very aged standard in my taste. A display port for our integrated graphics, five 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, our surge protected 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, and a slimmed down, but nonetheless excellent 8-channel ALC4080 audio codec from Realtek, which despite being a young codec, starts to be more and more popular among streamers for good reasons. Not only its uh, sound playback is nothing short than studio level, but its recording abilities are absolutely fantastic in terms of clarity. No static noise or interferences detected in my numerous testing, mainly thanks to the WEMA capacitors Gigabyte is now well known to equip their balls with. Now, I can't tell you enough uh, what a difference these WEMA capacitors make and how they transform an already very good codec into the best integrated codec on the market. Period. So overall, the back IO is very similar to what we've seen on the Z590 hours Pro, which is not a bad thing, but I, I would have loved to see a little bit less of USB second generation, a Wi-Fi 6E standard instead of the Wi-Fi 6, and uh, possibly also the clear CMOS to be moved from being soldered on the board to the back IO itself, which would have done great for troubleshooting accessibility. Now, front panel connector wise, well, same old, same old. We got our usual two second generation USB plugs, a five gigabit USB third generation front panel connector and our 10 gigabit type C, all of which were fully expected at this price range. But cooling wise, gigabytes really shines here. We got no less than eight hybrid connectors, which can all support individually either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor, bringing a high sense of enthusiastness to the Z690 Aros Pro, allowing it to support the most advanced and intricate cooling solution your sick mind can come up with, including a dual loop custom water cooling configuration. A gigabyte only feature, which in my opinion really helped placing its Aros lineup way, way on top when it comes to enthusiast appeal. Now, troubleshooting wise, we got a few things going on here. For starter, we have our first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot. The absolute bare minimum for a motherboard which juggles with three different PCIe standards, the three, the four, and the fifth. But for the very first time on a Pro Series, we'll also have a QLED error screen. A QCode error screen, which I absolutely applaud. It's so rare to find it at that price level and so crucial to help you refine your troubleshooting to the exact cause of your tech worries. Finally, we also have a rather obvious backlitted soldered power button, great for a quick boot, as well as a reset and a flashback BIOS button. So definitely a very complete suit of troubleshooting options, um, which was not necessarily expected at this price range. My only critique would be the placement of the reset and a flashback BIOS button, which I found counterintuitively placed and very hard to access, but I, I'm nitpicking. There's so much going on for the Aros Pro here. I'm not gonna hold that against uh, Gigabyte on this one. Now, BIOS-wise, Gigabyte stays with a very familiar interface. It is clean, it is high definition and relatively easy to use. The overclocking menu is straightforward and puts you right away in control of the different CPU ratios and voltages. Finally, this would not be an Aros motherboard without traces, even minute of some RGB yumminess. Starting with a rather lazy, I want to say, yeah, lazy RGB strip reflected below our IO roof and our usual four RGB connectors, two of which are addressable and placed in pairs at opposite sides of the motherboard for an easier access. In short, a very laid back RGB approach, but still enough to make you feel like the better man you know you're not. Now, in conclusion, at $330 before taxes, the Z690 Aros Pro is the most affordable mid-range Z690 board, but also, paradoxically, the most powerful one. It is a no-nonsense overclocking motherboard, engineered to perform and not just to look, because to be fair, 
it really doesn't look like much. In clear, it's focused on CPU delivery and everything else on this motherboard is here to support that. PCB layering, cooling option, and most importantly, an extended troubleshooting solutions vital to get you out of failed boots and explaining the arrival of QLED error screens, precious troubleshooting feature, which is usually reserved for much more expensive Aorus boards. In short, there is nothing polite about the Z690 Aorus Pro. It's all about primal, brutal force and everything it needs to keep it there. There is a sense of engineered efficiency which absolutely obliterates its competition, including the more expensive streaks on every possible computing metrics, making the Z690 Hours Pro the must-go overclocking board of this year. So in short, if you're looking for the most powerful motherboard money can buy, the Z690 Hours Pro delivers a complete solution at the best possible price. It does sacrifice looks over power, granted, but in terms of gaming or content creation, there is nowhere else you money would want to be.